million Africans were taken from their homeland and forcibly transported across the Atlantic, a journey that approximately two million of them would not survive. By the turn of the 18th century, European merchants were building vessels capable of transporting hundreds of enslaved people per journey. These ships had extra portholes for ventilation, weapons mounted on deck in case of rebellion, and additional compartments added below deck to take on more human cargo. Before boarding the ships at African port cities, enslaved people were stripped of their clothing and remaining possessions and had their heads forcibly shaved. Enslaved people lived on the deck of the ship in a temporary wooden house constructed by the crew. They were segregated by gender and age. Adult men were kept separately and shackled in pairs. Women usually left unchained in their designated compartment and children often free to move about the ship. People were forced to relieve themselves where they sat, creating hellish conditions when combined with the heat and lack of ventilation below deck. Disease was rampant. Dysentery, malaria, yellow fever, smallpox, measles, and influenza ravaged the enslaved and crew members alike. Enslaved people were also subject to forced exercise, which sometimes included dance and song for the entertainment of the crew. Enslaved captives deemed disobedient were tortured and beaten, usually whipped with the especially cruel cat nine tails Women, while usually left unshackled, were raped and sexually abused by members of the crew, sometimes arriving in the New World, carrying the children of their attackers. But it was the women, using their minuscule freedoms, who would often coordinate mutinies against their captors. Captain Luke Collingwood was afraid of the financial cost of more deaths. Enslaved people that died of disease were not covered by the ship's insurance, but the enslaved who drowned were. Collingwood ordered approximately 130 enslaved people thrown overboard. This is a horrifying photo. It is a picture of a British sailor removing the shackles on a slave's ankle in 1907. I through some old newspapers and I actually found a runaway notice uh, for a slave from Kentucky who allegedly escaped, according to his master who placed the ad, with a slave collar on his neck. And um, was uh, alleged to have been going towards the Ohio River. Now, if he had a slave collar on his neck, which is the contraption you'll see on the right here, um, that was put on people who either threatened to escape or people who had done it before and were captured or returned. It was meant to keep you from getting into the woods. Uh, the hooks would catch on vines and whatnot, and I thought, what if I tried to follow any information, any points of you, sir, are going to put your finger over your Adam's apple. We hope your neck is not too thick for this, and we hope we don't clip you. Okay, hold on one second. Are you, are you okay? Great. Um, this was put on, uh, on a person um, to keep them from getting into the woods. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Arucha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Honors and salute to you, other brethren, you fellow believers, you followers of this faith, the supporting cast, you know, that's helping out. And also, Shalom to the hopefully elect, Shalom to the elect, peace to you. So, this was not something I actually ran across. This was something on my spirit today of when I first came into the truth, Deuteronomy 28, all the way through kind of hit home, right? So just putting it together and looking at the whole content of everything, you know, we can clearly see without a doubt uh, a hurricane is biblical, as they say, a snowstorm or blizzard will be also considered biblical. Right, so we have to say that this would be a biblical event. Now, I was also looking on another channel. They was talking about white slaves and all that. Well, you had different forms of in, in, uh, indentured servitude, right? But this is even beyond slavery, right? This was a torture, you know, a torture, so-called tortured Holocaust, so to speak. 
the um, what we had to endure in the you know on those slave ships, <clears throat> especially coming back and forth, you know, making those trips and uh, all the way around. I mean, the world was conquered, <clears throat> you know, by these slave handlers. Let me say that, and we suffered. <clears throat> okay, and out of that, I wanted to put more clips in. Out of that. This is where we get the rap, the rappers, and the, that is also funded and pushed, and the killing, and the and the, um, the adultery, and more handguns in the neighborhoods than you know you can imagine. So our slavery was beyond slavery, if you want to look at it like that, right? We had our family stripped, our heritage stripped, and then we get into this side, and we get here, and then the man is removed from the household. So we could clearly see. We are in the, waste, the worst state of a people. And if that's the case, who would biblically fit these situations of this, this systemic oppression? So anyway, I want to go into a couple of scriptures, obviously. I mean, I put some in there to kind of go forward with that, right? So let's go to um, Deuteronomy 28 and 23. It says, and the heaven that is over thy head shall be brass, right? And that's what those things were over their head. And the earth under the under thee shall be iron, right? And those are the shackles. So we can clearly see too many things are adding up. And now they're trying to scramble since the truth is coming out, right? Now they're trying to scramble and say, well, you know, some of these people were you know, the real Hebrews in Africa. And some of these people were this and some of these people were that. No, it was us, right? We were those people uh, that was set up by the Heavenly Father. Well, the Lord had created. And he set up today elect men to bring forth this truth and even other men. There's other people just bringing forth the truth. The elect will be saved out of it, but, you know, in the end time prophecies, but this is something. So also what I want to do, I want to go into the, um, uh, let me read another scripture real quick. Uh, Amos 7 and 17. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, thy wife shall be a harlot in the city, and thy sons and daughters shall fall by the sword, and thy, and thy land shall be divided uh, by line, and thou shalt die in a polluted land, and Israel shall surely die into the captivity forth of his land. Right? Israel is a people. Okay, so clearly you see what's happening to the sons, definitely. Uh, the sons and the daughters, right? And we see the parent thing that's set up that they're twerking in front of. You know, and it's um, also, I want to say... Um, was also interesting is in the video clip they were speaking of the men was on one department the woman was on the other department and a woman was left the free you know free reign but the men were shackled together so we can kind of see that this concept still goes on where Jake is shackled you know they're put in situations they're oppressed they're killing one another. They're shooting one another. They're just totally out of control because of the lack of discipline, the lack of family structure. But then the women are just left to do whatever it is they want to do. I don't know. It just seems like the coincidence <laughs> has never fully changed. Right? It has never fully changed. So, anyway, what I want to do is I want to go back to the commentary. I found this also um interesting in the commentary because you got to understand they can't go back like these these uh these uh people who um these scholars or whatever who write these uh commentaries they're only really going to go back that some of it they might go in the future here or there but they didn't know there was no, this was a thing that's well known now. There was mysteries that has been revealed that we have now. A lot of times when they wrote these commentaries, they see a yoke of vine upon their neck. 
they had to start thinking, well, wait a minute. That should have flashed through their head. This has happened to a people. But then, this is what they did. They went to Jeremiah. Uh, I'm going to see if I can find it. They went to Jeremiah 28 and 13, where it also mentions a yoke of vine. And now we can see how um, vocab does his thing. It says, go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. See, when you go into yoke of iron, a yoke of iron can be anything that's a yoke of, of an iron. Let You know what? Let's see what a yoke, <coughs> yoke is. And then we're going to go with yoke of iron. Because you can have, like I said, a yoke of wood. You can have a yoke of iron, but it says a yoke of iron upon thy neck, right? It may not say what a yoke of iron is. Might have to go into, might have to go into the online etymology. See if we see it. Nope, I don't see it there. <clears throat> but it says a yoke of iron upon thy neck, which makes all the difference. Which makes the biggest, which makes the biggest difference, because that's what was put around our neck, and it was a specific type of of iron. Now the Most High ain't gonna say, well, we're gonna, it's gonna be a specific used piece of iron. That iron was used. Um, it says yoke means basically to join together. That was specifically used, as the man said, for, for you not to uh, escape. Let's see if I can pull it up on Google. Nobody's going to say exactly all out what that is. But when it pulls up, you see the pictures. I believe Apostle Tahar did some video like this some months back. When you pull up Yoke of Iron, this is what you see. Nothing but slaves and chains. Now, we know and if the if the place ain't gone in two years, <laughs> They'll probably have literally yokes of iron and won't see so-called black people up. In fact, I'm going to get one of these images. So, it was interesting to see the um, commentator's viewpoint on this topic. I'm not going to read all that. That's a lot. But I'll read a little one. It says, the keels in... Okay, right here it says, for the view... Although it was perceived every side of the national life has been brought under the curse, yet love to this people and the desire preserve them from the curse by holding up uh, before them the dreadful severity of the wrath of God. You know, this is why, you know, a guy came up uh, Saturday. I see this word. He had dreadlocks. And I said, did you know what dreadlocks come from? And he was fully taught and educated and he believed it. I don't know if he cut the dreads off. You know, that's hard for some people. But he said he was getting out of America, man. He, he can't be here anymore. So we can see. Impel the faithful servant of the Lord. Um, it's not saying much on it. So when you get to this thing with the yoke of iron, they may talk a, man, they may talk a little bit on it. But it says here, this is a cruel thralden and rigorous oppression this is highly just that they who refuse the reasonable service of God should be made slaves to their enemies wait a minute and that's what happened to us right and instead of the easy yoke of God should be put under a yoke of iron okay but the commentaries, they're going to try to look at it another way. But when you see yoke of iron, it's clear, right? It is clear, 100%. Let's go to Joel. I, that just came to my attention. Let's go to Joel. I believe it's the third chapter. So how do you know who the Israelites are? Now, again, we say there's Israelites that's going to look like different nations. But you didn't um, the 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 um, the so-called black Jews, black Israelites. Let me say that so-called caught the the hardest part of this slavery, you know. Joel three, 
and they have cast lots for my people and given a boy for an harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink. Now, before the transatlantic slave trade, you had what you call the sub-Saharan slave trade, which I believe they did that with another so-called African nation. The problem is, it's it's since we went down into Africa with other dark nations, <laughs> they linked us with being African because we went down into Africa. And then those, those slaveries between other Africans and what happened to us, they're kind of linking and saying, well, you just sold your own people. When Arabs, so-called Arabs, was just as black. <laughs> so, but they wasn't called us. So you could clearly see this was dealing with different nationalities of people. Never had anything so much to do strictly on skin color. Now there's variations of determining features by tribes, by nations and people, because you had different tribes and features. Some had different tones of skin complexion. That's why um, Solomon said, I am black and comely. It wasn't that he had to say he was black. It's just that he had a distinct complexion. Well, well melanated, you know, the most high sin, a well melanated son. So anyway, uh, was also came as Yahweh the one you call Jesus. So without a doubt, the whole point is of this video, without a doubt, all the things that you see all add up, all the scriptural parts of it, no matter what you try to deny and say it ain't this, it ain't these people, it was, and, you, and in your mind it's still those people because they're in the land, all of a sudden they're the people. When, when you read the 64th verse of Deuteronomy 28, the Israelites were scattered into all nations. So we will be everywhere. We won't just be in one particular location. But we can see how the media machine and the lies, when you raise and destroy a people, as Jeremiah 17 and 4 says, and you take their heritage and you re-teach them and give them a whole new ideology, you grow up believing that, man. You'll believe anything you're taught, especially some of you who got the benefits. That's all you like your pastors and preachers. Uh, that's all I have on that which also goes back to slavery. That's a whole nother video. That's all I have on that. Shalom.